In this video, I'm gonna be answering what is a chicken brooder and everything you need to know. And stay tuned till the end because I will go through the basic requirements of a brooder. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So a chicken brooder is an essential piece of equipment if you intend to hatch and raise chicks yourself. The really nice thing about having one ready to go is that you can effectively hatch year round if you really want to. I'm also later on, I'm going to discuss different heaters for chicken brooders. Some folks get confused thinking a chicken brooder is an incubator of sorts. Well, the unhelpful answer is <laughs> it can be. An incubator is the place where you put fertilized eggs to be hatched. In this closed environment, the egg is supplied with heat and moisture sufficient to promote growth and hatching. On day 21, your little peeps will emerge looking quite pathetic. At this point, you should leave them in the incubator to dry off and fluff up. Chicks can actually stay there for about 48 hours before they need to move. A brooder is the place where you move your chicks to after incubation. Here, they will spend a lot of time being fed, watered, loved on, and of course, being kept kept safe and warm. As you can see, the incubator was a brooder for maybe a couple of days, but it is not ideal for long-term brooding. Now let's get into the different types of chicken brooders. The first one is called an area brooder. This is a step up from a box. Your chicks now have got much bigger and require more space, so you've moved them to an area or a coop. Ideally, you would have the area brooder set up permanently so the chicks can stay there until they graduate to the coop. If you intend to keep and raise chickens, it's always a good idea to have a brooding area or a starter coop ready ready to go. When not in use, you can use it for storage of accessories. Remember, as a general rule, the more expensive they are, the more durable they are. The second type of brooder is a chicken brooder box. This is what most of us have or start out with, and this is just a large container that is modified or made to keep chicks in one particular space. This type is great when they are small and don't require too much space. It's usual to move them from the beginner brooder to a larger area with the same type of setup. Whatever you buy or make, make sure it is at least 12 inches tall to prevent escape. Also, it is difficult for chicks to grip with their feet. So until their legs are much stronger, use paper towel as flooring and bedding. They should be able to be changed over to pine shavings after seven to 10 days. Now let's talk about chick brooder heaters. There are a few types of heaters for brooding purposes, but the most popular is the heating plate. It is by far the easiest and safest to use. All you need to do is set it in the area, introduce the chicks to it, making sure that the plate barely touches their fluff or feathers, and that's it. Another huge advantage with these is there is minimal fire risk. The plate maintains an even temperature and the chicks have the freedom to move away or snuggle under at will. Brooder plates come in several sizes so you can brood 5 to 50 chicks with no problems. The second type of heater is the brooder lamp. A heat lamp or ceramic lamp used to be very popular before the creation of the heating plate. All you would do is simply hang the lamp on a chain and on a secondary securing method inside the brooder. You can then use a thermometer and adjust the height of the lamp to control the temperature for the chicks. It's worth noting that heat lamps definitely pose a significant fire risk. Make sure yours is securely fixed in place and is working correctly before you start brooding. And the last option is the infrared heater. Infrared heaters are similar to heating lamps. However, the lamps are said to reduce aggression in chicks, so they are usually recommended. As they are a large panel, they do a great job of spreading the heat around the brooder so you don't get chicks bullying each other for space. They are thermostatically controlled, which makes them much more cost-effective and more efficient. While a little more expensive, if you are anticipating long-term use, the cost is well worth it. Now let's get get into the basic requirements of a brooder. But before I get into that, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, regardless of the type of brooder you buy, just remember at its most basic, it is a safe, secure area that houses your chicks until they are large enough to move into the coop. The brooder consists of several things. Perimeter, this can be bought or made. A heat source, there are several types like a heat lamp, ceramic lamps, or heat plate or the infrared heater like I went through. The security is important. It needs to keep out cats, dogs, mice, and small children. The area should be completely self-contained and accessible by only you. And food, you will need to provide a food container and appropriate food. Water, and again, you'll need to provide a suitable drinker and clean fresh water daily. And lastly, bedding. And make sure you pick bedding that is suitable for chicks. This can be newspaper or paper towels for the first few days and transition to over to pine shavings. Now let's talk about the space requirements of chicks. Chicks are tiny and always huddle together, but don't let that fool you. They still require a fair amount of room. The recommended square footage is two square feet per chick. In the first couple of weeks, you can get away with a bit less, but once they start to grow and find their place in the pecking order, mischief will break out. Toe picking, feather plucking are two manifestations of nasty habits, and once these start, it is definitely difficult to break them. At six to eight weeks old, the floor space needs to be increased to four square feet per bird. You are approaching adult dimensions for bird space. Adolescents,
adolescents is the worst time for bad behavior, so plenty of room is advisable to prevent injury, bullying, and frustration. So let's go ahead and answer some frequently asked questions. Which brooder should I buy? So the answer will depend on what you intend to do after this batch of chicks and of course finances. If you fully intend to hatch several batches of chicks, then it really does make sense to buy a kit. Make sure it has all you need and is very durable. If you don't want all the components then and there, buy what you do need. If on the other hand, you have a designated space ready and some supplies ready, just simply buy what you need. Now let's talk about how to set up a brooder. Before you introduce your chicks to the brooder, a couple things need to be done. Even if you bought all the equipment brand new, rinse it down with either some disinfectant or warm soapy water to make sure it's clean. Secondly, the most importantly, test everything to make sure it works and have it working before you place the chicks in it. Now let's answer the question, what brooder temperature do chicks need? I briefly mentioned earlier, but for the sake of completeness, I'll run through it again here. Day zero to seven, 95 degrees, day seven to 14, 90 degrees, day 14 to 21, 85 degrees, day 21 to 28, 80 degrees, day 28 to 35, 75 degrees, day 35, 70 degrees. Remember, during each temperature drop to observe your chicks and make sure they are comfortable. The best way to determine if it's warm enough without a thermometer is to watch your chicks. If they are at the outer reaches of the box, it's too hot. If they are clustered under the lamp, it's too cold. If they are dotted around in the area, you have it just right. At around day 28, chicks can go outside for short spells as long as it is warm and sunny. If you are hatching in winter, you can drop the temperature by another five degrees to 65 degrees Fahrenheit until they are fully feathered out. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out this one over here. That's gonna do it for us at the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, like the video, subscribe, share the video with your friends. And with that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.